Welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast, where liking what you like is never a bad thing. Here's your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. Hey y'all, welcome to the No Guilt Fangirls Podcast. I'm your host and head fangirl in charge, Patty Holiday. And not only is this the Monday movie minute, but it's also cue the confetti, my 100th episode. Say what? Like, how did this happen? Uh, Feels like just yesterday, my friend Jane was messaging me and saying, hey, girl, you need a podcast. And I was like, what? What's a podcast? (laughs) And here we are. Uh, More than 12,000 listeners later and 100 episodes in. And I'm the proud mama to the No Guilt Fangirls podcast in the podcast community. Um, I also have two other podcasts coming as well. And if you just caught that and you thought, wait, I know of one other one. I know of now streaming Disney Plus, but what else is she talking about? Oh, you didn't miss anything just yet. There's another podcast on the horizon. We're waiting for a couple of things to fall into place and then we'll be launching and you will be the first to hear about it, of course, when this time is right. But back to the Monday Movie Minute. This week, we are going to continue talking about box office and the Oscar contenders as I finish watching the few movies that I didn't see the first time around when they were out in theaters. So just as a recap, Oscar movies that I've seen include The Irishman, Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Ford v. Ferrari, Parasite, and this week we're talking about 1917. And if you want to hear what I had to say about those other movies, I am pretty sure I covered them all on my previous Monday Movie Minute, so you can scroll on back and listen to those if you're curious. But we are going to talk 1917 today, and we're also going to talk why I think, um, hmm, I think this is the slam dunk winner for the Oscars, based on what I've seen so far. Yep, I said it. I don't like making predictions, but... Well, I'll explain it all here in just a little bit why I feel that way. All right, but first, let's real quickly go through the box office. Uh, Number one, Bad Boys for Life. Number two, 1917, which my theater was fairly well attended. And it was, you know, like 1130 on a Wednesday showing. So people are definitely still going to see this movie. And number three was Doolittle. Number four was The Gentleman. Five is Jumanji, the next level, which surprises me, I'll be honest, that it's hanging in as long as it is. Maybe I need to watch it again. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. The Turning comes in at number six. Star Wars Rises of Skywalker, number seven. Little Women is number eight. And yes, this is an Oscar contender. And no, I haven't seen it yet. And I'll admit, I'm probably dragging my heels a little bit. (laughs) Guys, I just don't like Little Women. I'm sure the movie is great. I just don't care for this story and so it'll probably be the last one I watch (laughs) uh number nine is Just Mercy and number 10 is Knives Out all right let's talk about 1917 and this is my parent movie review and uh here we go here we go with the bold Oscar prediction it's not that bold uh but I feel like this movie has it in the bag at least based on everything that I've seen so far. And even the ones that I haven't seen, The Marriage Story and Little Women, I kind of feel like, I just feel like this one, it screams, give them an Oscar because it was really well done. I feel pretty certain that Oscar voters are just swooning over aspects of this film that they're not getting from the other films as a whole. And that's why I just, I just feel like, I think they won the Golden Globe for Best Picture. I feel like they're likely going to get this Oscar. Does that mean that I loved the movie? You know, no. I mean, if you know me, you know this is not something that I would just gush over and love just based on the content of it. But I was absolutely impressed with many elements and felt the love from an award (laughs) winning perspective. So I I get that. Um, What is 1917 about? This is young Lance uh, Corporal William Schofield and Tom Blank, both of them uh, are sent off to basically call off an attack uh, that's being set up by the Germans. Uh, Basically they have to go and find, you know, a whole other unit and tell that unit don't do this attack because the Germans are fooling you. They have not retreated. They are waiting for you. They are lying in wait. And if you do this, 
you're all gonna die. Um, that's pretty much the, the the news and the the intel that they got, and they are sent by uh, their general to go in on this dangerous mission. It's not very far away. I think they said it was like six miles, but very treacherous to get there. Um, if they succeed, they will save something like 1,600 men. If they don't, it's going to be a total bloodbath. And Blake's brother is one who is on that front line and could be one of the casualties. So they have that motivation. The young soldiers go on this incredibly dangerous mission to save all these lives and then, of course, risking their own along the way. World War One, right? Uh, now, first of all, what everyone's talked about, and it's true, uh, the whole movie is treated as a one-shot movie, which is basically, if you're not familiar with that term, it's just, you know, the camera is moving as if it's one shot only. They never cut, they never take, so you never get, like, another perspective of, like, somebody's reaction if they're talking to them. You don't get the the actor saying the lines and the reaction separately like you know everything looks like it's just one camera going all the way through that's not how they shot it but that's what that's what they were going for and it was done incredibly well it was done incredibly well the technical elements uh and almost seamless it's almost seamless the way that this was pulled off and for that alone I think it's worth giving the Oscar to Uh, they did such a beautiful job it's it's immersive and when you're talking a war film about the trenches of WW1, well, whoa, you know, that's that's powerful. You you felt like you were in the movie. The way this is shot, you felt like you were following along on this incredibly crazy journey. Going into the movie, I wondered if I'd be distracted and looking for the moments that they cut or spliced it together. But right away, that was gone. I wasn't looking for that. I, I was enveloped. I was into this movie. And it did not even enter my mind to try to see the tricks or try to figure it out. Didn't even didn't even cross my mind. Now, the acting was also extremely good as well uh, with the two soldiers that we follow getting most of the screen time. We also get a whole cameo of who's who of British actors, which was kind of fun if you like that kind of thing, which I do. Uh, I kept wondering who we'd see next. <laughs> Where I, I can't go so far to say that you know, this was the best performances of the year and that they should also be up for our Oscars. I, I definitely think it was solid uh, and they did not let this stunning movie making experience down in any way. They were interesting and absolutely fascinating to watch on, on screen. Now, the story is where I personally didn't connect. I mean, it was just okay. But nothing we hadn't seen before or heard before when it comes to these war films, right? So it was definitely the way the story was told with the visuals that made this whole thing come together for me. And it's 100% something the Oscars want to see and support. And I think it's going to win. I think it's going to win. Out of all the movies that I've seen, I would personally vote for Parasite as a whole. But I loved the visuals, the story, and the acting of that. Like all of it as one big package. For me, Parasite uh, was just was really good. It was one of those movies I liked it enough while I was watching it, but I liked it even more as I thought about it more and left the theater. And I think those are the kind of movies that I personally would be voting for if I was an Oscar voter. But if Parasite doesn't pull it off because it is a foreign language film, so it's not so so likely to have to have that happen, then I think you can count on 1917 winning Best Picture. Now, is this family friendly? Is 1917 family friendly? Nope. <laughs> nope not as far as the violence and gore that you get on screen it's extremely graphic um, and almost matter of fact when it comes to how many dead bodies the soldiers encounter on their mission uh, which is also sadly accurate of course there is language there is some drinking and of course a lot of death and dying i mean bodies everywhere death everywhere it's it's but I, again, very accurate, I think, of what was happening on the battlefield in that time. Uh, so I wouldn't I wouldn't even say this is okay for, for even some adults who can't handle that kind of thing. So keep that in mind. It is absolutely a war film. And I'd say most kids aren't going to have an interest in, uh, in needing to see that visuals right up front in their face. However, however, I think if you have an older teen or older teens who are interested in history, this would be an important film for them to watch. 
Uh, I know my oldest, uh, who does have some interest in this time period in particular, he wants to see it. And well, now that he's 17, yikes. Uh, I guess he can. I guess he can. And uh, I, w- I would support it. I think in his particular case and in, in, in many children of that age, this isn't necessarily something I would say no to. It's definitely like a teaching moment. There's a lot of um, historical accuracies and, and information that can open up a wealth of conversations about what happened during this time period. So I'm not saying completely no. I'm just warning you that there's a lot of rough stuff going on with this movie. And you just need to know it is advance which again world war one obviously right all right well that's what i have this week for the monday movie minute i'm traveling this weekend to universal orlando to cover the running universal inaugural race as media but i still plan to have a fangirl episode out this week hopefully actually about the race i'm we've got some something in the works there as well as a monday movie minute next week but if that doesn't happen Well, you'll know why. I've been kidnapped by Dementors and I'm counting on Harry Potter to save me. So be right back after we get off Green Gods. (laughs) It might, it might it, things might be a little bit slower to catch up next week, but we'll we'll see how it all goes. I, I have plans and I have a I have a process in place. Hopefully I can pull it off. Uh, now as a reminder, if you are watching Shits Creek, if you are and you want to talk about it after each episode, I've got the segment for you. Join Jamie and I as we talk about the quotes, the wigs, the story, and all the wonderful things coming to us in this final Schitt's Creek season, season six. It's happening. Uh, And that episode will be out either Wednesday or Thursday for you. All right. That's what's going on this week. Now, thanks for fangirling with us for the Monday Movie Minute and come back and fangirl with us again real soon.